We welcome you back to the NWSL on Lifetime, the North Carolina Courage, and FC Kansas City just moments away from kickoff here at Salem Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park. Let's take a look at the lineup for FC Kansas City and Allie, their defense has been tremendous as is expected, but that midfield has had some questions this season. Yeah, I mean, they don't have a, a true playmaker and Newfield's out this week with a red card from last week, so Bowen steps in there, but you've got converted forwards into attacking mids with Groom and Ratcliffe, and you're going to want to see them getting at the Carolina back line. And then as we look at Carolina's lineup, Ashley Hatch comes in for the injured Jess McDonald up top. She's a rookie. She's someone who's been in with the U.S. team, and it's going to be fun to watch how fast her and Lynn Williams get at this KC stingy back line. Caitlin Rowland also getting the start in goal for North Carolina, making her second appearance of the season. She had a shutout against Sky Blue FC in the midweek game, so giving place for Sabrina D'Angelo, who'd been the starting keeper but had given up some goals in her last few appearances. And I think it was even more than that. She was spilling the ball often and teams weren't necessarily capitalizing on those moments. So it's just about giving someone else a look and hoping D'Angelo's confidence can return to where it should be. It is a beautiful field here just outside of Raleigh, North Carolina. Warm afternoon. I tweeted that out because I was shocked when we walked up how pristine this field is. It really is gorgeous and it is a hot one, 86 degrees, partly cloudy. Players will be appreciative of those clouds and a little bit of a breeze for sure. And now free kick opportunity for the Courage. This may be a bit far out for Dabini to score directly. We saw her do that last week. Beautiful goal. Didn't quite hit that one the way she wanted to. And I don't know why they didn't have Dahl Kemper swing that in. She's been so good on her service into the box. That is Ashley Hatch, who you mentioned earlier, getting her first start today. Christina Uncle, our referee. Jessica McDonald, Paul Riley telling us they are resting with a hamstring injury, just trying to get her healthy, give her a little bit of a break to get fully healthy. But he was excited about Hatch. Well, there's a reason they picked her in the first round. Cole Barnhart gets her first touch on the ball. Stalwart in goal for FC Kansas City. He's been there since the beginning. As has Becky Sauerbrunn with this Kansas City club. Desiree Scott back to full health. And I know it's early in the game, but you're already getting a look at the North Carolina press not allowing Kansas City any time on the ball to possess. Brittany Taylor trying to touch it up to Shea Groom. Abby Ursay, the New Zealand international, just announced her retirement earlier this year. Let it go out of bounds. And that's what you have to do if you're Kansas City at times is not be afraid to play ugly. Play that ball long to relieve that pressure. Calls her bony. Touching it up to Doniak. No whistle. Taylor, a little back heel. Nice move to keep it alive. Hello, Labanta looking to get over the top. Mitt Roland will grab it. Taylor Smith, a converted outside back for North Carolina. Will add some speed and attacking presence in that back line for the Courage. Yeah, and we talked about in the open where Dabinia and Doniak are going to want to tuck inside and allow those outside backs to fly forward. I think that's going to happen more on the right side between Dabinia and Smith. Smith has that pace, and Dabinia wants to filter inside naturally because she's so good on the ball. Shea Groom, quick turn the other way. Katie Bowen played just down the street collegiately at North Carolina. Has that pass taken away by Doniak? Hard tackle from Scott. And she comes away with the ball. And as a player, you have to start to figure out that it's four minutes in, but this ref is letting play go on. 
don't be afraid to mix it up. Get in on tough challenges because it looks like she's letting a lot go. Hatch trying to intercept for North Carolina. Couldn't do it. But now the courage take over. Mewis, Paul Riley wanted her to get higher up in the attack. Trying to feed Lynn Williams. The shot! Not on target, but what a setup. Well, that's a perfect example of why Paul Riley wants Mewis running at that back line. Look at the pace on that final ball. Just perfectly weighted, dies in the path of Williams. She's going to obviously want to hit that far post. But again, Mewis driving at that back line. Dabinia has been lacking in her final pass, Paul Riley said. Well, Mewis has that capability. We typically think of her as being a player that can spray the ball around the park, but she's got that ability to die a ball into space. Counterattack chance potentially broken up there. Hinkle looking for Williams. Got to be a pretty good ball to beat number four back there, as Paul Riley well knows. In his second year coaching this group, of course, won the championship with the Western New York Flash after the team relocated this year to North Carolina. And he's got a challenge ahead of him when they lost Kawamura. They lost that third center back, and now they're shifting into a different system. And you can say systems don't make all that difference. Well, they do when you're going from a three back to a four back, and, and we're going to see how North Carolina fares. What would you say is the biggest difference, especially in the way this North Carolina team would like to play? Well, I think in terms of their ability to get the width going right now, you can see that you have Hinkle and Smith, two outside backs it, on your screen. Smith at the top, down on this side. Now it's Doniak. They have to be the ones to provide width because you can get sucked in centrally in the 4-4-2 if you have typically center mids playing in those outside mid roles. So it's about providing that width uh, somewhere. At least someone has to have that recognition. And then obviously going from a three back to a four back, it changes a lot in your spacing in the back line. Well, and you talked about Yuri Kawamura. So sorry to hear her injury season ending after the last game when she was hurt. And she had really come in and been a big part of the team, a new addition this season. And now they're going to have to figure things out without her. Player that sat just above that back line in the midfield. Big one, big one, big one. And at times played in the back line. Zerboni finding Hinkle. She'll cross it over the head of Dabinia. Not hard to do. She's 5 2. But there are some good targets in the air. That, that's probably a moment you miss Jess McDonald and six feet tall up there in the far corner. I think that one's even too tall for McDonald, but <laughs> but Hinkle getting forward, you know, with that left peg, she's a left footed player in that left back position. That's some. That's one of the reasons Jill Ellis is bringing her in. You like that. Mewis took the shot. Scott deflected it. Williams. Dabinia tracks it down. Wants a handball. No whistle. Hatch. Not much behind that shot. She had to turn, and here's LaRue. Dahl Kemper was right on Sydney LaRue's back. Dahl Kemper also called in to Jill Ellis' side with the friendlies coming up for the U.S. Doniak overlapping run. LaRue tried to flip, but in reality, there was nobody there with her. And that has been a challenge for this Kansas City team. You think about losing Amy Rodriguez after the first game of the season. Who else steps up there with Sydney LaRue? Right, and she's someone who I think performs better in a two-front system. I don't like when she's as isolated, but she's changing her game. She has to learn how to check back, be a possession player. Doniak trying to get after it, and Barnhart scurries off of her line. Carolina really starting well. They're not only breaking them down in their possession, but you're getting glimpses at how dangerous they are getting in line and serving the box. There's a reason they lead the league in crosses and completions on their crosses in the box. Mewis. Doniak trying to get it out to Hinkle, but Taylor right there with her.
And Doniak just spinning inside. I love the run by Hinkle trying to get around the outside. And as Doniak lowers her head, you see the boot to the face. And the ref rewards that to Kansas City. And I think it's because she lowers her head. But nonetheless, I think that's a pretty high challenge with the boot. Zerboni, who's been in more duels, according to Opta, than any player in NWSL this season, won that ball. And we are at Salem Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. North Carolina Courage top team in NWSL, hosting FC Kansas City. And reminder that the U.S. national team will be in action. There's an international break from NWSL play June 8th. You'll get a chance to see the U.S. women against Sweden. Ian Dark, Julie Fatty will have the call in ESPN2 at 1.30 Eastern on Thursday. Doniak charging forward. Now to Zerboni. team has to tie in with her and there's nobody within 15 20 yards of Sydney LaRue in a white jersey it's just too easy for Carolina to solve you mentioned it earlier Lexa Newfield out after a red card two yellows the last game as Smith charges forward hatch a little behind her Williams stays with it Mewis with the shot And it has really been all North Carolina in the early going. It has, an, and on that last play, when LaRue goes, your team has to decide to tie in with her or not, call her back. Lynn Williams, a little challenge there, but Barnhart able to pick it up. I would almost argue that this Kansas City team has been so defensively stingy because of situations like that where they don't tie in offensively, but they don't get exposed defensively. They didn't let out of their shell, but no one's about to break them. Chance here for Shea Groom. LaRue trying to make her run, but the ball will bounce to Roland. checks back to that ball. She has no one underneath her in support. They're used to that three central midfielder combination and usually there's a Dabinia sitting underneath there. Well, the gap was way too big between the mids and the forwards on that entry pass. Dabinia being defended by the rookie Christina Gibbons and taken away by Kansas City. to win it, got Sauerbrunn in the process. <laughs> Becky Sauerbrunn, such an anchor back there and leader as she is with the U.S. team. And the yellow card will come out for that challenge from Hatch. And I don't know that this ball is necessarily on, but you can't fault Carolina. That's their style. And then again, a high boot comes in by Hatch. It's hard to tell if it was her foot or her knee that got Becky. Let me ask you a question. What's the difference between that play that warranted a yellow and the play we saw a few moments before where the ball went the other way? I think you take that up with the Referees Association because <laughs> I think that's a curious. valid, I think it's a very valid point and I don't think they were all that different. Now down Cuff have... down on the sideline has more for us. Yeah, Paul Riley asked the same question. How is that not a, the same foul on the other side? Conversely, though, when they happened, though, the referee turned and said, the fourth official said to that, their bench that she ducked her head before, so that was a different play. And it the, wasn't, the, Dallin. Needless That's to exactly say, there were some shoulder shrugs, yes. Yeah, yeah, look, because on the replay, you could clearly see Sauerbrunn ducking her head to try to win the ball. Groom was the leading scorer for this Kansas City team a year ago. Got a couple of assists on this season, still looking for her first goal. But I think you're exactly right. This Kansas City team, 
has hung its hat on its defense, which has been great. Five goals allowed, tied for the best in the league, along with Portland. But they don't get a lot of opportunities because they're not sending numbers when they get them. Right. I mean, they're they're pretty low on the table in terms of possession in the opponent's half. Scott takes it away. Christina Uncle, the whistle. And I think that just goes back to the fact that they don't have a true playmaker. They don't have anyone in the center of the park that they can get the ball to that says dictate the tempo. Tell us when we need to go. Dictate it with your pass when we're going to stay. And they're hoping Sydney LaRue starts to find her form, and she is. But you can't just rely on her alone. You've got to get those attacking bids underneath in Groom, in Ratcliffe, at least running at that back line and springing her in. At some point, you got to buy in to getting numbers forward. Take a chance, even against a great offensive team that has a lot of threats like North Carolina. You have to give some support up there to Sydney LaRue. Does have three goals and assists on the season. Is the NWSL Player of the Week for Week 7 after two goals against Washington. And we're going to have an early substitution here, it looks like, as Katie Bowen is down on the ground for Kansas City. Well, that's got to be so frustrating for Bowen, getting the start in the center of midfield in place of Newfield. And 15 minutes in, having to make that sub. And as a coach, you hate having to make a substitution this early as well. Oh, we mentioned how hot it like, is. Exactly. But Moros is someone who's played in the midfield already this year. She's played in the back line. It'll be interesting to see how he shifts his midfield because she's typically been in one of the more defensive roles. So Becca Moros. 5-5 defender from New York, New York, who played collegiately at Duke, also down the road. Very familiar with the stadium, as are many of these players. You know that all the players in the Triangle area, Duke, North Carolina in particular, in the ACC, but there are a lot of UCLA Bruins out here represented, especially in this Kansas City team, and that's a UCLA team that won a national championship right here on this field back in 2013. Christina Gibbons and, from yeah. Raleigh. But she's a Duke grad as well. I mean, when she was called out in, in the player walkouts, the, she has a huge fan base here. It was lit up in support of her. Yeah, but not only did she play here, she's from here. Right, and she's someone that, that we should all keep our eye on because she's on the radar with the U.S. Women's National Team. Even though she's right-footed, plays on that left-back position and is very comfortable on the ball. Williams trying to use her speed to get past Yael Averbush. Chance to turn for LaRue. She has Shea Groom with her. LaRue lays it off the behind Shea, who will come back to it. Good takeaway. No whistle. Ratcliffe taken down. I know you love to let him play, Allie, but it's pretty physical out there. Maybe even for you. Maybe. Yeah, that looked like a foul for sure, but too slow by Kansas City in the attack. You can just see when they get up there, they're petering out. They're running out of ideas. If Groom could have moved that ball earlier, I think Gibbons is joining in the attack on that left side. In fact, she was the one who played that initial ball to LaRue down that left flank. Doniak trying desperately to turn on Taylor. Couldn't do it. Dahl Kemper off with her service. A rare miscue by her, but that was a good look in that previous screen. How expansive Carolina can get in their attacking shape, and they are getting the width of those outside backs forward. It was something I questioned in the open. It's happening right now. This time, foul is called. Carolina ball. And it's funny. When we talked to Vlaco, he said, you've got to match the physicality of North Carolina. North Carolina is last. They're in 10th in terms of conceding fouls. This team is physical, but they're not creating dangerous challenges. They're not being the ones that are being the dirty team, I would say. That's an interesting statistic there, because I think that is generally the perception with this North Carolina team, that they are very physical. Smith. 
as UCLA Bruins is talking about. Comes Raboni. Back out to Smith. And once again, a reminder, we will be off next week. All the NWSL players will take a break unless they get called into international duty. You can check out the U.S. Women's National Team on Thursday, June 8th, taking on Sweden. Ian Dark and Julie Fowdy will have the call on ESPN2 at 1.30 Eastern time. And don't forget when they take on Norway on Fox on the 11th. I'll be on that one. A couple of matches coming up for the U.S. over in Europe. That's Sweden, of course. A rematch of the Olympic quarterfinal heartbreaking loss and penalty kick shootout for the U.S. You know, it's interesting since Pia Sunhaga, former U.S. coach, has gone back to her native country of Sweden. The U.S. has yet to get a victory against the Swedish side. Three draws, including that match at the Olympics in Rio last summer, which officially goes down as a draw. Plenty of other international friendlies going on as well. Canada taking on Costa Rica, Brazil, so Tabinha will be headed to a couple of matches in Spain, Iceland taking on those teams. And what's so great about that is that the NWSL is abiding by those international windows, so none of these players are missing games. Giveaway there by Williams. Very crowded down the middle of the park right now. And you said it, Jen. I mean, the space is on the outside of those two center backs when they initially won that transition moment. Moros, who came on for Katie Bowen about five minutes ago. Some good possession here from Kansas City. Until it's broken up by Ursay. Brittany Taylor looking for some options. Second year player who was with Western New York from 2013 to 2015 and a giveaway. Mewis with a full head of steam going forward. She has Williams. Tough ball at the feet for Lynn Williams. Davinia coming in, back heel. Williams with the shot. And that will deflect out for a corner. And that's exactly why it's so fun to watch this team. Just the quick counter. Look at this relationship between Dabinia and Williams. The understanding, the chemistry doesn't come off, but they earn themselves a corner kick. And that all starts with Mewis driving at that back line. This North Carolina team is deadly when it comes to set pieces. We told you about Dabinia scoring directly off a free kick. And they are also very difficult to defend on the corner kick. Dal Kemper to take it. Herseg heads it back toward the goal, headed around a couple more times. Mewis finally up and over. And I don't think there's a better set piece taker than Dahl Kemper in the women's game. That ball's driven in. Herseg lofts it back. Mewis, you've got so many tall targets in the box. They're able to win all those chances. Doesn't come to fruition, but again, this ball doinked right where it has to be, and you can see everyone reorganizing, knowing that that ball is coming back across the frame. Just not enough pace on it to make it dangerous. Urseg at 5'10", Mew is 5'11". Urseg scored a goal last week. Similar situation, header against Chicago. And a 3-2 loss to the Red Stars, a team that has just had this North Carolina team's number. They played them two times in the span of seven days, lost both of them. 
Well, Chicago was so good at taking advantage of those outside pockets, outside the three back centers, the center back system with press getting into those spaces. And it was just wreaking havoc for Carolina. Both times they played them, they didn't know how to solve it. Dabinia, good collection of the ball, crosses in. Doniak brought it down, but out of bounds. Fifteen players came over from the Western New York team that won the NWSL championship last year here to this new franchise now in North Carolina. Dabinia, one of the new additions, and she has been very important to this team in the early going. Well, she changes the complexion, the style. She's a possession type player. So not only are they a threat on the counter and transition moments, now they can build it up and she can be someone who breaks it down via her passing, her intelligence, her movement. It adds just a different wrinkle that coaches have to, to plan for and, and adjust for. Ratcliffe has it taken away by Smith. Mewis trying to pick out Hatch. And that's really the first time we've seen Hatch be able to open up her legs. You get a good look at how fast she is. And even though those balls aren't necessarily working out, they're not coming, amounting to much, it's softening up the defense. It's pushing Kansas City back so North Carolina has an opportunity to play underneath again. Ashley Hatch, rookie out of BYU, as you mentioned earlier, second overall pick for the Courage in the 2017 draft. 47 goals, 21 assists. It's a Herman Trophy finalist a year ago. Doniak kept it in. Williams. Dabinia, quick touch. Williams still on, it takes the shot, just misses! And that attack by Carolina is so good. You just see Lynn Williams getting posted up. Carolina is unable to clear it. That simple ball by Mewis looks easy, but it, it is, opens everything up. And then the combination between Dabinia and Williams again, almost on target. But that is a beautiful attack, all stemming from playing underneath and then springing Williams wide. Now Christina Uncle will blow her whistle, come check out Labanta who's on the ground. <laughs> Say the fouls against Kansas City. Oh, North Carolina, excuse me. There's and that's the shot. Yeah, that's Williams. I mean, that doesn't miss by much. Barnhart probably has it covered. Sour run right outside the area where it's headed away by Urseg. Doniak circling back to the ball. And Kansas just unable to generate much by way of offense yet. Even that last service, Carolina heads out cleanly. Good switch of the field to find Smith. That ball crossed to empty space, though. on by LaRue, but Room a few steps behind. Ursay. And again, just too easy. I know that ball flies out of bounds by Hinkle, but too easy for Carolina to solve that pressure. Kansas is 
going with one, two players. They're able to play out of it. And yet, at the time being, still zeroes up on that scoreboard, and this may be why this Kansas City team is who they are this season, at least to this point. They've been tough defensively. They've had trouble scoring goals. They're eighth in the league, have scored just seven goals all season long, and three of those came last week in a win over the Washington Spirit. Yeah, they just don't leave themselves exposed often. Dabinia Smith's making a run. Smith has a rocket on that foot, but right at Barnhart. And that save right there for Nicole Barnhart will go down as the 300th of her NWSL career. Talk about stability in the back. Well, we know Barney can bring that, but how about Smith flying down that right flank? Again, they suck Kansas City all the way over and then allow Smith to just be wide open on that far side. That's what Carolina can do to you. They make you honor them centrally. They make you honor them in getting in behind, and it's just a matter of recognizing what space is opening up because it's there. Paul Riley was really pleased with McCall Zerboni's play so far this season, number seven. They're in the middle of the field for North Carolina. Both her and Mewis so, so wonderfully share the ball with each other and set the tempo for this team. And she's someone that I haven't talked about yet, with, but I should because she just kind of plays those simple balls and that helps open everything up and get a rhythm for Carolina. Cole Barnhart's numbers in this league unparalleled when it comes to goalkeepers. See those 300 saves, most in league history. That goes along with their NWSL record, 35 shutouts and now 33 consecutive starts in goal. 35-year-old just continues to keep on keeping on back there in goal, and she's tough to break down. And she has to be credited with a large part of the reason that they are stingy defensively. And it's also her organization. I mean, she helps get everyone where they need to be. She's experienced, she's wise when she comes off her line, when she decides to sit in and be a shot blocker. Barnhart has won a couple of NWSL championships with the FC Kansas City team, as they won the title in both 2014 and 2015. Also won a championship in WPS with FC Gold Pride. Sauerbrunn, nice step in to take it away. Scott looking for Groom to kickstart some sort of an attack, but Jaylene Hinkle all over it. Heads up touch by Zerboni. Hatch looking to turn. And with Sauerbrunn pulled out, Doniak trying to go right back toward the middle. Pass just a little too far out in front. LaRue and Ursic tangled up. Sydney LaRue comes up with it. Scott with a ton of real estate in front of her. She'll take the shot. And Roland says, okay. Pretty easy save on that one. And better patience from Kansas City. It all starts with LaRue's ability to hold up that ball and bring Gibbons into play. But I don't mind Scott striking that ball from that distance. No, it wasn't a threat, but test Roland. She hasn't been in all that many matches. See what she has. See if how her nerves are settling in. Roland facing her former team. She came over a, a couple of years ago. First to Western New York and now to North Carolina in a trade from Kansas City. She was there for the two NWSL championships as the backup goalkeeper. With one with Kansas City, one with Western New York a year ago. Smith can see the change of gear when she puts her head down and goes. That cross has just not been there for her today. No, but so dynamic getting forward. And I think mix it up a bit. Have someone come feet with her. A nice little one-two perhaps so she can settle herself before she whips that ball in. 
More games going on tonight across the league. Sky Blue FC and Portland, that should be a good one to keep an eye on. Washington and Houston, tell you what, those are two teams in desperate need of a win right now. Orlando, Boston at 7.30 Eastern time. And then tomorrow, Chicago, one of the hottest teams in the league, unbeaten in the month of May with three wins, will take on the league's highest scoring team in Seattle. Reminder, you can watch it all on the Go90 app, nwslsoccer.com, go90.com. Hinkle. Sauerbrunn will try to hustle to keep this ball in play. Hinkle holding off Groom. Now Labonta coming in and Hinkle will get whistled for the foul, saying there might have been another push in her back there before she pushed Labonta. Well, that's just a sign of frustration from Hinkle. I think she served that initial ball and it was a poor decision. She's trying to win back possession for her team, gets her, clips her from behind. Five fouls so far for the Blues from Kansas City. Four for North Carolina. No goals yet. It has been undoubtedly dominated possession and shot wise by the Courage. But they have not been able to break through and that is similar to one of their matchups Last year, these two teams, when North Carolina was Western New York, they split, each team winning one nothing as the visiting team a year ago. And July 23rd at Western New York, the Flash outshot Kansas City 24 to eight, eight to three shots on goal, and they lost. Shake Room had the only goal of the game, one nothing win for Kansas City. The beauty and the ugly of this game. <laughs> so true. Moros looking ahead to Ratcliffe, rookie out of the University of Virginia. Gets tangled up, finds LaRue with the shot that is high. Offside flag is up, but that, no question, the best chance of the game so far for Kansas City. Yeah, and Kansas City's finding their way. And look at this touch by Ratcliffe. Cuts off Muse's recovery. That's so big time. And then the, to pull away from LaRue, open up that, that passing lane, try to curl in far post. That's a good looking attack and a way Kansas City is gonna find their way on this scoreboard. And we're being told there may have been a foul whistled before the shot was taken. And uh, if the referee's gotta let that go, see that Kansas City is a good opportunity. Dallin, you have more for us. I can add to this. Let's hear it. Oh, sorry guys, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Riley looking for an explanation for the fourth official. Because LaRue is offside, he basically said the play was dead. The foul was called, they played on when she was offside. The shot really didn't take place. Therefore, they pull it back and they get a free kick. Again, Paul Riley, some shrugs and a few choice words. <laughs> thank you, Dallin. Whoa, that doesn't whoa. make any sense. Whoa. And now one of the best free kick specialists in the game, Yell Averbush, had three goals a year ago. And all three of them coming off of set pieces. Averbush, too high. Averbush also played collegiately in North Carolina, won two NCAA championships with the Tar Heels. It's in her third year with Kansas City. Has seen her role shift in her professional career, midfield and then now in the back line. I thought it was interesting what she said about that, how she's starting to appreciate it more because you always want to be higher up on the field if you're a center mid to begin with. But she's reading the game, seeing the tactical elements, and now there's a beauty in it to her. Lynn Williams was involved in a flurry of activity early in this game, but Kansas City's done a better job of limiting the service to number nine at least these last few minutes. And you just think that it's probably tired legs. I mean, she's been hustling all over the pitch. 
sometimes you've just got to pick and choose your moments when you're not going to be involved in the attack. But I think if North Carolina is going to get into this or get on the scoreboard at least, they've got to have better service from those flanks. That's where they're at their best is serving the box. But right now it's just off a bit. A little too far in front, a little too far behind, not getting in line. Oh, the crowd like in the nutmeg from Hinkle. Doniak taking on Taylor. And how about this by Jalen Hinkle? That's your left back, folks. Whoop! <laughs> right through Groom. She knows she's closing her down. She wants to cut inside. You can see her setting that up all the way. Saw the opening, literally, and <laughs> Work the ball through. I don't know that you do that to outside backs, but uh, attacking center mid, previous forward, you can go for that move. Potential short option here is Doniak is standing next to Dabinia. That is how they'll play it. Now Dabinia with the service. Far side, headed back toward the goal. It's bobbled off the post a couple of times. Williams finally deflects that off Gibbons. A little pinball. Doniak was wide open if Mewis could have gotten it over there to her. Instead, it would be Labonta. Has LaRue and Ratcliffe. LaRue. Great run, takes the shot, but it's high! Golden opportunity for Sydney LaRue. Golden opportunity for both sides. I mean, this is just a swing of momentum here. Great run by LaRue. Great timing, that's your attacking mid, Ratcliffe driving at that back line, slipping LaRue in, and then just strikes that right at Roland, parries it over the top. I think Paul Riley arguing LaRue was offside. It did look that way, at least initially to me, but maybe the run was timed just the way Sydney wanted it. That's how Kansas City is finding their way, finding their chances. Attacking mid's driving at the back line. First corner of the match for Kansas City. LaRue at it, and out of bounds. How about those last couple of minutes for some action? And here's a look at that final pass. Definitely offside. Full body ahead of all three of those Carolina defenders. <laughs> Daniak looking for Hatch. Comes back into it. And it'll be North Carolina kick. Coming up at halftime, Dallin will have NWSL news and some great highlights from last week. Plus, Ali and I will break down this first half, which has no goals scored yet, but we've come close a couple of times. The pipes next to Nicole Barnhart have played their part. Well, this game hasn't lacked for chances and or physicality for that matter. Just a battle. It looks like Hatch almost pushes Sauerbrunn into the path of Doniak. earns a yellow card as a result. Yep, Sauerbrunn with the yellow. Tinkle. Kansas City yellow card at the 43rd minute of play, the number four, Becky Sauerbrunn. Davinia did well to keep possession there against a couple of defenders. Smith, what a touch from Mewis. Hinkle, bouncing ball in the area. She's back on it, loves that left foot. Hinkle, still with the ball, there's the cross and Barnhart spills it out of bounds. Corner kick coming. And the last time nearly resulted in a goal a couple of times for North Carolina.
I like that by Hinkle to go end line. They've been serving the box early time and time again, which is allowing Kansas City to stay faced up and attack the ball to clear it. Well, in this case, she goes end line, gets the deflection in the corner as a result. Mewis to take it this time. Bent toward that back post, headed down and out. Good chance for Del Kemper. That's a good ball by Mewis, but I still go back to Dahl Kemper is so good at these services. Why mess with a thing, something that's working? Oh yeah, we've seen three corner kicks taken by three different players now for North Carolina. Dabinia and Dahl Kemper and then Mewis on that one. North Carolina team started the season absolutely on fire, at least in terms of results. They weren't scoring a ton, but they were scoring enough to get the wins. Won their first four games with the only team in the league to do so. Had allowed just one goal against them in that stretch, but in their last four, they are one and three and have given up nine goals. So you may be seeing a team that while it's still at the top of the table is searching to find a little bit of confidence and momentum. Well, that can happen in the beginning part of a season when you have an athletic team like this. They can hit the ground running and take advantage of teams that aren't organized yet. And now teams are figuring out how they can play against them. Having said that, I still think this Carolina team is incredibly talented and showing that they can break teams down via a plethora of ways, not just their transition game, not just playing direct style soccer. Two minutes of stoppage time added on to this first half. Scott looking over the top. Ursig wins it. Hinkle finding Hatch. Mewis sees she's got some room to work with. Dabinia, the shot off target. Dabini seems to be getting lost a little bit in this 4-4-2 with her out on that right flank. I think Carolina needs to try to get her involved more, not just on that counterattack moment. Are you at the minute? You think North Carolina tries a formation change? Or do they not, with this personnel, maybe feel confident enough to go in that three back? I don't think so. I think the formation is working well now, just the decision making within this system. when Taylor Smith starts flying down that flank. Can she hold it up and maybe combine, find someone else if her service is off? Can you find Dabinia, Dabinia to feet perhaps a little bit inside? Nice move there from the Brazilian. Is our whistle. So despite a number of quality opportunities for North Carolina, no goals so far for either team. And Dallin Cuff is standing by with North Carolina head coach Paul Riley. Thanks, Jen. So coach, coming into this game, you know you had some injury issues. Kawamura, McDonald changed your system up a little bit. How do you feel you performed in the first half? Yeah, really happy with that first half. Created a lot of chances. I think McCall and Sam, particularly in the midfield, ran the show and bossed the game side to side, uh, spread them out a lot. And, you know, we, we didn't really create some great chances, but we had about six, seven half chances. But really pleased with the performance. The work rate was excellent. We got the beater in the game to the last 15, 20 minutes. I think she could be a big a big moment for us in the second half and getting ahead of the wall. And we just got to get Lynn facing goal and getting to goal. We haven't done that yet. Thanks a lot, Coach. Got to the second half. Coming up after the break, we will get you caught up on what was a fantastic week seven of NWSL. I've got the highlights from last week. Also look forward to this week, international break, and some great action coming up to round out week eight of the NWSL. We'll be back in just a few minutes, folks.
welcome back to a beautiful day in North Carolina. That is Falls Lake, about 20 minutes away from where we are. Cary, North Carolina, the Courage and FC Casey doing battle. Now, we're about to head into the first international break here in the National Women's Soccer League. So that means the women's national team is back at it. June 8th, a huge showdown with Sweden. Remember, Sweden knocked the U.S. out of the Rio Olympics. This game will be live from Gothenburg. Ian Dark, Julie Foudy on the call. ESPN 2, 130 Thursday. Do not miss it. Let's look back at what was great action through the course of last week's games. Goal of the week. I mean, Becky Sauerbrunn played in the Olympics. World Cups, three-time defender of the year in this league. But how about this? She gets her first goal of the week off a header, 60th minute. Dead go on to win 3-2. Save of the week, Danielle Colaprico. She's a midfielder. She scored early in this game. But she's playing a goalie right there. Clears it off the line, preserving the lead over the courage. They go on to win that game 3-2 at home. Player of the week. Sydney LaRue, back to doing what she does, folks. Just dispenses a defender, coolly finishes in the ninth minute. That put that game level 1-1 early on, and this put them ahead for good in the 27th minute. They go on to win 3-2. She is your player of the week. But the player of the month of May is Sky Blue FC's Sam Kerr. She was fantastic. This is down in Houston. Put them up 3-1 here. Ice this game on the road. They go on to win 3-5 of five in May, vaulting him into the top four. She had two goals and two assists to lead her team. The Aussie was dynamic and dominant throughout the month, and she is rewarded as such, the player of the month. Coming up tonight, though, big time action here. Mallory Pugh and the Washington Spirit take on Houston Dash. Now, Houston Dash is a new coach. Randy Waldrum is out. Omar Morales is in. How will they respond? Find out tonight. You can watch the game on the Go90 app, go90.com, nwslsoccer.com, and the NWSL app. You can watch all these games on all those mediums as well. Sky Blue in Portland, that is a great game at 7 o'clock. Orlando hosts Boston at 7.30, and the Red Star and Seattle on Sunday, a top four clash three Eastern Sunday to round out your weekend. As I mentioned before, we're on break next week. But we are back on Lifetime, June 17th. Kristen Press, Mallory Pugh, Chicago, and Washington from Chi-Town. It's going to be a great game, a star-studded affair. Will Pugh get her first goal? Find out tonight at 7, if she hasn't by then. Find out the 17th, 3.30 on Saturday. The Red Stars loaded with talent. Four players on that team were on the player of the month, team of the month in May against Washington Spirits. Saturday, June 17th, 3.30. Do not miss it. We'll be on international break next week, but then the week after that. We come back here. Jen, Allie, break down the first half of this game. This broadcast is presented by authority of the National Women's Soccer League and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the National Women's Soccer League. We welcome you back to the NWSL on Lifetime from Salem Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Do not let that score fool you, 0-0, but Jen Hildreth, Ali Wagner, we know we could have seen maybe two or three goals in that first half. Yeah, I mean, I think this game is playing out kind of the way we anticipated, where Carolina's having the run of play. They're dictating possession. They're dictating chances, but I think Paul Riley said it best. They're not creating quality opportunities, and that is a credit to this Kansas City defense because they don't make it easy. They're hard to break down, and that's why Can or, excuse me, North Carolina is not finding the frame all that often. Well, let's take a look back at some of the best chances we did have in this first half North Carolina early putting the pressure on. Yeah, and it just comes from Sam U as Paul Riley wanted her to get forward more often. Well, she does, and that's the reason. A perfectly weighted slip pass to Lynn Williams. Lynn's going to want that back, at least put it on frame next time. And then Smith was having a heyday on that right flank. She was getting in, but lacking in her final product, whether it was a serve or a shot on the box. And then Carolina, so dangerous on set pieces. Set pieces, set pieces, set pieces. Ball sent in by Dabinia. Dahl Kemper gets on it, ping pongs around. Carolina unable to capitalize on it. And then Kansas City, one of the few attacks they had with LaRue getting a shot on frame is when that attacking mid is driving at that back line and they slip her in. So as you take a look at the first half statistics, interesting, we were a little surprised to see equal there, two shots on goal. North Carolina has the advantage in overall shots, 13 to four, but been pretty close when it comes to quality chances. And I think that's gonna change in the second half. We'll find out. It's a hot one out here, but it has been an entertaining one so far as well. We'll have more from the half coming up when we come back. You're watching the NWSL on Lifetime. Just about ready to start our second half, but moments ago, Dallin Cuff caught up with FC Kansas City head coach Vladko Andonovsky. 
Coach, what was your message in the halftime team talk? Nil nil on the road, but what was your message? You know, it was a no no, but I don't think we played the, our best game. Uh, I think that we need to go back to uh, basics and do the, the simple things uh, perfect first and then move on and uh, get uh, get in more uh, complicated things. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Always good advice, isn't it, Ali? Do the simple things first. I love that honesty. Very defensive first half for one of the league's best defenses in FC Kansas City. But when they did get a couple of chances, they had some good looks. Sydney LaRue, as we showed you that highlight at halftime, got herself free, put it over the crossbar. Well, they showed us how explosive they can be. We talked about Carolina being explosive. Well, KC can be. And it's just a matter of doing that consistently and taking care of the ball so they can get in those positions. North Carolina head coach Paul Riley talking to Dallin before the half and saying he was pretty pleased with the way the first half had gone. But you can bet he's not going to feel that way if his team is not able to pick up a result here. This team, as we mentioned, has been struggling a little bit. It's one win in their last four matches after starting the season 4 0. And a win here this afternoon would guarantee that North Carolina will remain atop the table. Quite a different position for this team than when they were the Western New York Flash a year ago, and they were able to sneak up on some people, not so much this season as they have that defending champion target on their back. No, they're definitely not flying under the radar this season. But I think for them to find their first goal in this match, it's going to be about the final third decision making. Nice touch there from Dabinia. Smith. And you don't want to take those opportunities for granted. You want to make the most of them, right? You're getting open. Taylor Smith, we saw a number of times making her way up into the attack. A little pressure that time. That's one of the things this North Carolina team is known for. No, you're right, Jen. And I mean, even in that last play with Smith, if she's in that position, at least earn your team a corner kick. It's those little nuances, those details that can break open a game for you. Kansas City all in white on the road this afternoon. North Carolina in Navy. It's a hot one, 86 degrees when we kicked off. A little bit of cloud cover now coming across Salem Stadium at Wake Med Park. Wonderful soccer has been played here over the years. Now the home of the North Carolina Courage. Team relocated here to Cary, North Carolina. Christina Gibbons, the Raleigh, North Carolina native, charging forward. Taylor had some time. Kansas City found their way out of that North Carolina pressure with three up front. They were in a three front when I looked down at the field in a moment. I think they're changing their attacking mentality a bit. Not really sure what happened on that last play as uh, Lo Levanta put her hands up, maybe thinking that the ball was not in play yet. Instead, it's a handball. Sorry, Levanta, you're not going to displace Barnhart out of goal. <laughs> Cole Barnhart making her 300th career NWSL save in the first half. Most all time. And we'll see as this Kansas City team if they can keep the possession. And see if you're right about that. Maybe a little tactical adjustment in their attack. Have to keep the ball first. Well, that last play was a good look at Le Lebonta, excuse me, Scott, and how destructive she is sitting in front of that back line. She won the initial challenge, and then again on the second one, just mixes up play. Desiree Scott out of Winnipeg, Manitoba, and Canada. The destroyer, as they call her. corner kick opportunity here for North Carolina. They have proven to be very dangerous and you will get your wish. Get to see Dahl Kemper take it. 
perhaps. Well, she played short to Davinia. Lewis trying to keep this alive. Sydney LaRue having to defend. And just too cute on that corner kick. You've got all these tall bodies, send it in the box. A chance here for Kansas City if they can get some numbers up. Mewis takes it away. So that opportunity quickly snuffed out. And now North Carolina coming back the other way. Ashley Hatch making her first start today. Skies it. And that's the decision making in the final third, that final piece that is lacking for North Carolina. I like Hatch wanting to have a go, but Williams is wide open. Slip her in. She has a better angle. She can run onto it. Zerboni stepping in. Mewis, can she get into the attack a little bit more? She'll try to. Hinkle. Williams lays it off, serve as a cross, nobody home. Oh, good hold up play by Lynn Williams. I like that Hinkle actually dribbled inside, tried to combine, but with that service with Doniak, you've got to recognize that Lynn Williams just played you that ball. You don't have your targets in the box. Dahl Kemper. She'll lose it out of bounds. Has been such a steady force at center back for this North Carolina team. Dahl Kemper coming into this match with 4,140 consecutive minutes played. That's an NWSL record. Offside flag goes up. Jen Hildreth, Allie Wagner, Dallin Cuff, and her entire NWSL on Lifetime crew. Happy to be making our first visit here to Cary, North Carolina and Salem Stadium at Wake Med Park. Top team in the NWSL, the North Carolina Courage on its home field where they are three and one this season. Taking on FC Kansas City, which has put up a good fight so far. Neither team has yet to concede. Becky Sauerbrunn leading that back line for Kansas City, both she and Nicole Barnhart, two allocated players who've been there the whole time. This ball over the top, Rowland has to play it with her body. Look at that composure. Caitlin Rowland getting the start in goal today. Didn't show any nerves that time. And that's a new wrinkle by Kansas City, something that Carolina wasn't ready for. Sydney LaRue is checking. Ratcliffe is reestablishing pressure on the restraining line and that ball good thing Roland's off her line because Ratcliffe is getting on the end of it if she wasn't ready for that one Roland one of those UCLA Bruins who was a part of that 2013 NCAA championship which was played here on this field it's the NCAA all-time leader in shutouts also has some experience with the U-20 women's national team, so plenty of big stages for Roland. Williams. How about that first time ball by Sam Mewis in there? Mewis was working it again, now it's Hatch. Tripped up just outside the area. Free kick coming for the Courage. I mean, this all is McCall Mewis starting this playoff. Ashley Hatch does a brilliant job rolling her defender. Gets caught up under her feet. I think that's why she takes on Moros there and earns her team a free kick in a dangerous area. Let's see what North Carolina opts to do here. Plenty of weapons. Jaylene Pinkle, Sam Mewis both in the vicinity of the ball. Looks like Hinkle on that left foot be the one to take it. Going for that in swinger. There 
as the service from Hinkle bends it uh, too high. But Hinkle, one of the players who's been called in to the U.S. Women's National Team, got several players on this field who will be busy. They don't get a week off during the international break. I think they prefer it that way. That's right. And you'll get a chance to see the U.S. National Team in action on Thursday, June 8th, taking on Sweden. Ian Dark, Julie Fatty will have the call on ESPN2 at 1.30 Eastern. Sydney LaRue is called offside that time. It was a questionable non-call in the first half with LaRue. That time the flag goes up. But we have seen a few more wrinkles. A little more rolling of the dice maybe in Kansas City getting the ball forward. And committing numbers forward. And that's where Carolina can pounce on it if Kansas City doesn't strike them first. But I'm liking this confidence out of Kansas City. Ratcliffe is on the move. Scott trying to find her. There is Ratcliffe and Smith. A ton of speed between those two players. How about Taylor Smith? Usually an attacking player most of her career comes in last season. I think it was the last match of the regular season. Paul Riley put her at outside back and said she was a little bit relieved not to have to be out there in the next game. Quite a big learning curve, but she is an important piece back there for this North Carolina team. And that was a glimpse at just how quickly she can close in defensively and snuff out an attack. But I think one wrinkle she needs to bring to her game is that ability when she does go forward. Because in this system in particular, you're going to have to be in a pinching inside, which leaves that room for Smith getting forward. And the end product just has to take a step up. I think McCall Zerboni knew this one was coming. Yellow card on Zerboni. That's her fourth of the season. She came in tough for this tackle, and I think knew right away. And <laughs> she's just feisty, comes in late. Unnecessary foul there because she had her center back. She had her team faced up, ready to deal with that attack. And now it'll be Kansas City's turn to have a free kick in a pretty dangerous spot. And Yale Averbush, who we mentioned in the first half, is kind of known as a specialist in these type of situations. Has a wicked bend on the ball if she wants it. But much like on the other end, you got to get your shots on frame. Easier said than done, of course, but yeah, clear good whip on that shot. Just got to get over it. Make the goalkeeper make a save. Anything can happen in those moments. And just to look at her strike on the ball, gets under it a bit much, fades away from goal. She's going for that near post. I like Ratcliffe in this game for Kansas City, number 25, the rookie, no, excuse me, second year player, was with Boston last season and first year with this Kansas City team. I mean, she's been working and working and not able to get on the ball as much as she probably would like offensively, but I think when she gets on it, she sparks the attack, both her and Groom. They have the capabilities of beating this midfield line of Carolina. They just need to be faced up more often, find those pockets, get their body turned, so they can do that. Shea Groom had it, but there is going to be a foul called. Smuis is on the ground. Dahl Kemper, quick restart over to Mewis. Service in. Dabinia was there, as was Hatch. That escalated quickly. Such a necessary intervention by Yael there. Great job recognizing no pressure on the ball, so they must drop, drop, get in that space in behind, and then just the little flick to send it out for corner. Fifth corner kick of the match coming for North Carolina. This time there's nobody near Dahl Kemper to play it short. And a service. Oh. Headed back by Arsene. It's flicked in a goal! Yeah. 
and that's why you don't get too cute on these corner kicks when you have the offensive weapons in the box, the height, the strength that this Carolina team has. This ball, she should be taking these corner kicks all game long. That ball is driven in and air sig. Amazing to re redirection on frame, and then McCall pulls off that back line, gets a little necessary touch on it to flick it by Barnhart. Nothing in that situation Barnhart can do. But that's all because of the brilliant service. And then Ersig with her height, the power to redirect that on frame. McCall doing her responsibility, pulling off that back line, staying clued in, gets that last touch on it. Abby Ersig scored a goal off a corner kick with her head last week. That time she set up Zerboni. Sometimes you just have to keep it alive. And in close range, not much Barnhart could do. Williams facing up the goal. That's what Paul Riley wanted to see. She crosses it toward Hatch. Good opportunity. Maybe the only change in Paul Riley's wish list would be that it'd be Lynn Williams a little more central, either on the receiving end of a ball like that or charging forward down the center of the pitch. In a perfect world, but that touch by Lynn Williams so good. I mean, she's just so fast that no defender can stay with her. This entry pass is great. Lynn Williams knows that Yael, she can beat her in a foot race. So she just takes a big heavy touch because that space is wide open, drives end line, and that is just a foot too high. Ooh, a shaky moment, but Barnhart collecting herself. And it was number nine, Lynn Williams, just coming up to apply a little bit of pressure. Lynn Williams has talked about one of the things that got her noticed for the U.S. team was making something out of nothing. Well, that was a perfect example of how she can do that. This North Carolina team has found a way to score throughout this season, and they take the lead here. They are a perfect 5-0 this season when scoring first. expect the floodgates to open now for Carolina. Hinkle, can she save it? She does, or does not. Not quite, ball did go out of bounds, according to our referee. I mean, you talk about a swing in momentum. The way this game and after that goal has changed, the, the pace, the confidence that these Carolina players are exuding. You think they're going to find the back of the net again. Looking for Williams, a golden boot winner and MVP of this league a year ago. And let's not forget the work she did to help earn the corner kick that eventually led to the only goal of the match so far. And this is where it's hard for Kansas City. You know, they've been struggling to generate much of an attack and now when you're down one nothing and your defense has been frustrating the opponent the complexion of the game will change they're gonna have to commit numbers forward to try to steal a point on the road maybe three Kansas City coming into this match and beaten in their last four they've won two in a row but are one and four this season when conceding the first goal So they have come back. Can they do it here on the road in North Carolina? Well, if they're going to, they're going to have to get Ratcliffe and Groom involved with Sydney LaRue up top. Alabanta having a tough time of it there. Williams, the touch to Hatch. Does her best to get it back, but behind Williams. 
And I don't think those two have found their chemistry yet in working with one another. They haven't played off with each other. They haven't played with each other often enough, and I just don't see a chemistry yet. Scott getting herself forward before Groom can get there. It's cleared out. Jess McDonald sitting out this game, the normal strike partner up there up top with Lynn Williams, trying to get a hamstring injury taken care of. And those two a season ago were quite a handful and were a big reason why the Western New York Flash found themselves as NWSL champions. Well, they play off of each other so nicely and then both put in the work defensively. As you see in the situation with Lynn Williams trying to close, making it hard for Kansas to play out. Those two are excellent at that and it's very hard for teams to build any sort of rhythm and momentum going forward. Levanta looking for Gibbons. Dabinia displaces her. Ava Bush to Ratcliffe, turns over her shoulder, see if she's got some time. Mewis looking for options. Quite a difference height-wise in the two number 10s out there on the field as North Carolina winds up coming away with it. Williams looking for Hatch, nice touch, <laughs> How about that final ball? Splits three defenders. Great run by Hatch not to close down her angle. She's sitting off that shoulder of Gibbons. Allows her that time to take that first touch, settle it, and then rifle that past Barnhart. Beautiful goal by North Carolina. And again, stems from their press. Stems from the vision of Lynn Williams. And then just that pace to get in behind by Ashley Hatch. I like the pace. I like that first touch from Hatch to... Give herself a chance at the shot. Maybe they heard me say they didn't have much chemistry because that was a thing of beauty. Erica Timrak has checked in for Kansas City. Coming in for Ratcliffe. Hatch got a little bit of a break. She gets to watch the rest of this one after scoring her goal. Kristen Hamilton coming on in her place. Kansas City. Groom still has it. The little flick out of bounds, but Shea Groom in Kansas City. Not letting down. Or is that Tim Rack up there? Excuse me. And just like that, Kansas City finds some life. That's Shea Groom. B Nursig easily. Good cover by Dahl Kemper there. And uh, apparently there's Kristen Hamilton Dallin, uh, not quite in the match yet. She's getting set to check in now. She was set to check in right before the goal. As soon as it went in, Paul Riley and his staff called her back. She put the penny back on. But then that, <laughs> that attack right there, she the penny ripped back right back off. She's set to come in, I believe, for Ashley Hatch, a defensive move. Gotcha. Thank you, Dallin. Good thing Paul Riley didn't make that move <laughs> just yet. And now, indeed, the crowd We'll get to still watch Ashley Hatch because she's going to stay on. Our official telling us that Hamilton will come in, but it will be for Mackenzie Doniak. And not a lot of production out of Doniak, but I think she's been vibrant on that left side. She works so tirelessly. And it's not just what she does when she gets in line and serves the box. It's her ability to, to work and put Kansas or make it uncomfortable for them. Nice game by her. Labonta immediately under pressure from Hamilton. Oh, the joy of having fresh legs. <laughs> when you come in late in the match. 
and you have to think that's the reason Ratcliffe was set bad because you and I were talking. I think she was having a strong game for Kansas City, providing that spark offensively. Kansas City trailing 2 nothing now to the league's top team, the North Carolina Courage, after goals seven minutes apart here in the second half. Paul Zerboni striking first, and then Ashley Hatch opening her NWSL scoring account. And how quickly the evaluation of Ashley Hatch's first start will be that viewed, right? Wasn't much of an impact throughout the game, and then suddenly she finds the back of the net and everything changes. Match getting the start this afternoon in place of Jess McDonald. NWSL's all time leading goal scorer. Sitting this one out and hopefully taking care of that hamstring with a big smile on her face, watching what her team is doing at the moment. will turn. LaRue held off her defender. Tim Rack takes the shot. Tell you what, watch out for number 15 in white. Paul Riley said, I hope they don't play Erica Tim Rack. She seems to always play really well against my team. Yeah, but how about this by Sydney LaRue just to hold Dahl Kemper off there and release that ball to Tim Rack. She's talked about how she's had to change her game and be involved in the build-up play, body players off it. That was a great example, a great execution by LaRue. Sydney LaRue getting called back into the U.S. national team for the first time since October of 2015, since the birth of her son Cassius last September. Missed all of last season in NWSL as well. And she talked pretty candidly about that recovery and trying to get back. I can't even imagine coming back to play professional soccer after having children. I am in awe of these women that are capable of accomplishing that. Me too. Just to get back to average human being, but to get to above average human being on the soccer field, even more impressive. The U.S. is searching ball there. Too far out in front of Dabinia. And just a good look at the press right now from Carolina. They're not going to sit back at 2 0 and hope this game winds its way down. They're going to stick to their style and make it difficult for Kansas to play out. stay in possession of Kansas City. Again, good build up with LaRue holding that player off, kicking it wide. I think if Kansas can do that quicker, earlier, then there's space to be had on those flanks where they can whip that ball in the box. Tim Rath. Gets it back. A bending ball to wind up with Roland. The NWSL on Lifetime continues in two weeks on Saturday, June 17th. 19-year-old Mallory Pugh makes her Lifetime debut as the Washington Spirit head to Chicago to face Kristen Press and the Red Stars. Our coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern Time, 12.30 Pacific, live on Lifetime. Oh, good challenge, Hatch. Still going with it. Hamilton comes in to clean it up. the cross. Marles trying to clear it out of danger. Love that from McCollum U is there essentially. Hinkle. The 
Jesse, give us some life tonight. Davinia has the space for a shot, but it's wide. Almost a gift there for Dabinia on that last one. And that's what Carolina does to teams. They just press, press, and it gets so hard for you to play out. And you give away careless balls at the top of your 18. Couple of substitutions for both teams. Megan Kelly will come on for FC Kansas City. Taking the place of Levanta. And then the crowd cheering for Liz Eddy coming on for North Carolina. And cheering for Ashley Hatch, who did finally come out of the match. And like I said earlier, she's going to remember this first start for her with her first goal, not the rest of the play as much. Goals solve everything. Unless you're a goalkeeper. <laughs> then they just make you sad. But you, you talked about McCall Zerboni and Sam Mewis, and I agree. Let's see what LaRue is able to do here is Tim Rack brings it down. We get back to those two midfielders for North Carolina in a moment. Paul Riley was the first one to bring it up at halftime with Dallin. Said he was really pleased with how McCall handled things. Lynn Williams, so much speed. Yeah, well, Amber Bush did all she could to try to hold Williams off, and it was almost not enough. LaRue takes the shot. And here's a look at the pressure that Lynn Williams can put you under. And I think Yael, she knows she's bearing down on her, but she underestimates that pace that Lynn Williams has. Good thing Barnhart was off her line. 82 degrees, the field temperature at the moment. There's a bit of a breeze here in Cary and some cloud cover. Lynn Williams, motor still running. I don't think you can underestimate the value that Lynn Williams brings. We know how potent she is putting the ball in the back of the net, but her work ethic, front runners don't do that. Not a lot of front runners do, and that's something to be valued. Well, and in a deep attacking field for the U.S. team, you have to have something. You got to bring something to the game. Maybe that's it. Especially the at the nine right. spot. They're so deep there. So how do you separate yourself? What other qualities can you bring? You know you have to finish. That's a foregone conclusion. But what other things, what other intangibles can you bring in with Lynn Williams? It's the work ethic. It's her ability to close. And as she said, make something out of nothing. Williams, 24 years old, was 23 when she won the golden boot a year ago in NWSL, the youngest to ever win that award. And I asked her before the match, I said, was it, was, it, was it ever on your radar that you would get called on the national team? Because at 23 years old, she hadn't been called in yet. She'd taken the path less traveled. And she said, you know, when Jay, meaning Jaylene Hinkle was called in, when Dahl Kemper was called in and I wasn't, I started to think it was a fleeting thought that it wasn't going to happen. And then sure enough, as soon as she let it go and got back to what she loved, she said, just playing the game, that's when the energy changed and she got the call up. Lynn getting a spot on this most recent call-in due to Alex Morgan's injury was not on their initial roster and played a little bit of a chip on her shoulder. Dabinia, so skillful under pressure. Frees Hamilton. Now Williams looking for Dabinia. And Williams back on it. Zerboni has scored the first goal. Gets it out to his Eddie. Loves to get up into the attack. Eddie's been hurt. Great to see her back out on the field for North Carolina. She was a big part of their run to the NWSL Championship with the Western New York Flash a year ago.
and how about this last attack? It all started, though, with Dabinia spitting out of pressure, a lovely little touch, sprung them in, in to that attacking third, and then those two combining all day long. They have such good chemistry. Yes, that pass was behind Dabinia, but you can see where, the, where their thoughts are. Ten minutes left to play. Kansas City down two. Timrak touches it in. LaRue was in the vicinity. Sydney LaRue telling us she feels like she's almost back to feeling like herself out there. Doesn't feel like she has that speedy burst. It was a big part of her game prior to pregnancy. And I said, hey, that's what everyone else on the field feels like every day of their career. <laughs> They're never as fast as you. She did have a good little laugh at that. I think it could be a blessing for her if she does get that pace back, because right now she's having to think the game. She's having to add different elements to what she can bring. Groom, two defenders on her back, keeps her feet. And now the whistle's blown. Looks like Kansas City will be getting a free kick here. In Kansas City, their attack has been generated with Groom on the ball when it was when Ratcliffe was on the field, running at that back line. They are so fast with it at their feet, and in this instance, she earns the foul. Things were closing down on her. Can Averbush test the young goalkeeper, Caitlin Rowland? On this attempt. In the same spot as the last go. She went near post the first time. We'll see if she sticks with that. Better that time. Maybe took a little deflection off the wall. And there will be more NWSL action live on the Go90 app. Go90.com, NWSLsoccer.com, and the NWSL app tonight. Sky Blue FC and Portland. Portland beat Sky Blue in both meetings a year ago. Washington and Houston, two teams very much needing a win as they face off, Orlando and Boston. Ashlyn Harris out for Orlando with injury. And then tomorrow, Chicago and Seattle to finish off this weekend's games before the players will go in the international break. Some of them off to play with their national teams, as we've talked about. Some maybe just go visit family, take one of those much needed mini vacations in a long season. Look at her. Hey. And good news out of Houston. The word is, if you saw last week, very hot conditions in Houston. Rachel Daly going to the ground immediately after the game, suffering from the heat and the dash saying she has recovered. She's been training and is expected to start. That's great news. Great news, because that was scary, absolutely. And as a player in that heat, it can be brutal. I've heard several people say just something about Houston, too, in that particular stadium, where it just it's really like an oven out there on the field. I believe though that was words from David Beckham himself, someone who's played in a lot of places. And to feel that way, there's something to it. at this point, Ali, a fair result with what we've seen on the field? I think a fair result and could be more for North Carolina. They've really dictated the tempo. I mean, Kansas City has had some looks, but for the most part, they're just still lacking in their attack and their ability to get into the middle third with numbers and then advance that into the final third. Opportunity here. Megan Kelly to Tim Rack, two substitutions this half. Back to Kelly. She'll take the shot. Roland finally has to make a save. And on that last attack, if you can't build up through the middle, 
okay, it's okay to go long. In that situation, they had numbers for it, and that's what they've been lacking. When they're playing direct, LaRue's been alone. Well, the second half, I think they changed that a bit, and you see Shea Groom sitting higher on the restraining line. So they are committing numbers for it. They have to. They're sitting down 2 nothing if they want to get something out of this match. FC Kansas City missed the playoffs for the first time in 2016. Scored just 18 goals on the season. That was next to last. And have had to make some adjustments to their attack with the loss of Amy Rodriguez in the first game this season. It was looking pretty exciting getting both Rodriguez and the Rue back in the mix. But now they may have to shuffle the deck a little bit more. And Brazilian teammates, Stabinia and Hosanna coming into the match now for North Carolina. Hosanna, over 112 appearances with the Brazilian national team, has played in four World Cups, four Olympics. In her first year with this North Carolina team. And I think coming in, you'd almost think Hosanna would have been starting for this group, but because they shifted into that 3-5-2, there really wasn't a spot for her in the center of the park. Dabinia's earned it, had a good game again today. I think she had better second half than first half and was on the ball more often. And Hosanna may be one of those pieces that Paul Riley is trying to figure out where she best fits in with this group. This is just her fourth appearance of the season, has made one start. Came over in a trade from Houston where she did not play, never joined the team as she was in residency in 2015 with the Brazilian national team and then 2016 with PSG. And I think since Tim Rax inserted into this game, Kansas City has looked more dangerous in their attack in third. She's finding better spaces to get in. I think that's helping them relieve some of the pressure of Carolina. Of course, Carolina is not going to press as often and as high, or at least you think, as these minutes wane away. And that's why Kansas City can have some joy. But I think Tim Rack might be an option as a starter. Mewis right on the back of Groom. Tim Rack was the 2013 NWSL Rookie of the Year. Been with this Kansas City team since the beginning. Former Florida Gator. And takes the ball away there. Pat Hosanna unaware. Right on cue by Tim Rack there. I mean, if Rocco wants people to do the simple things and do them right, that was a great example. Just track back, tracks back, toe pokes the ball away and plays a simple pass when she's faced up. North Carolina Courage looking to pick up their sixth win of the season, stay atop the table in NWSL. Okay. Couldn't think of a better position to be in heading into the international break. Caitlin Rowland getting the start in goal today in place of Sabrina D'Angelo's. is Rowland's second appearance of the season. So far has yet to concede a goal in both of her appearances. How about that defending by Becky Sauerbrunn there? Just picks her pocket clean, keeps possession so good. This Kansas City defense always so tough to break down. It was a corner kick that led to the first goal by the Courage and then a really beautifully executed play from Lynn Williams to Ashley Hatch to get in behind for goal number two.
Carolina throw. Kristen Hamilton doing some work. University of Denver product out of Littleton, Colorado. And I know Carolina's sitting up 2 nothing. I just find it interesting that they're opting not to go to the corners to kill this game out. I think they sense they're in control. They've got the tempo, and it's a why bother kind of situation. But nonetheless, end of match tactics can come and bite you if you don't pay attention to them. Two minutes of stoppage time added on here in carry. Moros looking up ahead at Kelly in her sights. Williams looking at the goal, nearly snuck one through. Such a quick release on that shot. But again, I think you go to the corners if you're Carolina. Don't give K Kansas City the ball back. Tim Rack on the turn. City just lacking that player on the ball. Tim Rack. With the confidence, the vision to slow it down, to speed it up, they all seem like they're a bit panicked when they get on it. And so that's why their decision making's falling off a bit. I think they feel like they're under more pressure than they in fact are. And they need someone in the center of the park to step up in the games going forward to just dictate tempo a bit, no one to slow it down, when to speed it up, and give everyone around them that confidence, that sense of confidence that the world isn't closing in on you. Well, Vladko Andonofsky, that's one of the first things he talked to us about this week was his midfielders, just lack of experience in that position. Most of the players he had, not true midfielders. And I think that's... What you're sensing is the lack of that, the experience, the knowledge of how to handle those situations. And perhaps can a purchase be made on the market to get that solution? And you look on the other side of what Paul Zerboni and Sam, Sam Mewis together have done to help direct the flow through the midfield. And there is the final whistle, the North Carolina Courage picking up their sixth win of the season, improving their record to 6-3-0. They will stay atop the table. Fine performance, getting two second half goals to get the win and the shutout over FC Kansas City. And I think it's a performance that puts fear in everyone else in the league about this Carolina team. I mean, we know how stingy Kansas City's been. Well, Carolina found the back of the net twice. It could have been more. And you just see how many weapons they have and their ability to get in in a variety of ways. Well, somebody who had a very big day was Ashley Hatch, and her first start got her first goal. She's standing by with Dallas. Thanks a lot, Jen. You just said it. First start, first goal, Ashley. But you're replacing Jessica McDonald, who leads the history of the league in goals scored. What was your focus coming into this match in your first start? Um, you know, just coming out and trying to keep that same pace and tempo that Jess does. You know, Jess is a huge player, and she does so much for us. So just kind of come out and do what she does. Now, KC comes in as the stingiest defense in the league. You guys scored two goals on them. So only the second time this happened this year. Second time they've had back-to-back -back two goal games since 2005. How difficult was it to break them down the first half? You guys may be a little frustrated. Yeah, we knew coming out that they would be a great defense. You know, we knew we just had to press them hard and get the ball and go at them. And so, you know, the first half we learned and we came in. Second half just kept going at them and got two goals. Now, take me through that goal. It was a beautiful goal you had. And you don't have many opportunities in this league. And you took advantage of your one. What was it like? Describe that goal. Um, I just looked up. Lynn had the ball and I knew she could get it to me. She gave me a perfect ball, perfectly placed. And all I had to do was just finish it for her. So I got the ball, took a touch, and the goal was there. So I just had to place it. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Enjoy the win. Thank you. Dallin, I think she played that down a little bit. Why don't you tell me yeah, what you saw in that, that goal that's again? That's all she had to do. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, that touch was perfectly placed. And then to fire that past Barnhart, I mean, she beat her near post. There was a lot of places she could have put that where Barnhart would have saved it, but brilliant goal by her. And, and I just love what she said about bring your pace, bring your intensity. You know she's going to bring that. And now the next level for her is to start to combine with her teammates around her because you can see how explosive she is. It's just getting her in more dangerous opportunity, in dangerous spots.
Paul Riley saying he thought that Ashley Hatch reminded him a little bit of Lynn Williams a couple of years ago, just sort of a young player who's gotten by in speed and athleticism, but is learning how to add some of those layers to her game. Yeah, and Ashley Hatch is a slender type player, so she you don't think she has the strength that a Lynn Williams does, but she is strong, she is powerful, she is capable of rolling defenders as we saw in this game. So I think that's a fair comparison, and now it's about adding those next nuances to her game if she can, so she can find her way from the U23s onto the full team. Special day for Ashley Hatch and a win for the North Carolina Courage on their home field. 2-0 over FC Kansas City. We've got lots more going on here in Cary, so don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more with the NWSL on Lifetime. North Carolina getting a 2-0 win over FC Kansas City, but Sydney LaRue had some good chances for her team. She is currently standing by with Down Cup. Thanks, Jen. Sydney, no goals put up in this game. You seemed a little frustrated at times. Take us through what was North Carolina doing to kind of control you? Yeah, um, it was it was a tough game. Uh, it was a hard loss for us, for sure, and we have to definitely go back home and figure it out. Um, but we did some good things, but it was it was a tough game. It was hot, but it was hot for everyone. So, yeah. Uh, you're not going back home yet. You're going to Sweden and joining the U.S. national team. Your son, Cassius, was right here. He's coming with you. How are you continuing to develop and, and come back from, from uh, having him and dealing with being a mother and an elite player? Yeah. Um, if you haven't had a kid, I think that you have no idea, so have no idea. how hard it is to come back. So she knows it. Um, but it's tough. Uh, but I think it's the best gift ever. I mean, he's the best part of my life. So um, it's really cool to have him and watch me, and it's cool. So you'll be over with the national team again. It's the first time you've been there in almost a, over a year now. What are you looking to accomplish? What are you excited about? Are you nervous about anything as you go back into that camp? Um, no, I'm not nervous. I love the game. I just want to have fun, and I just want to play, and I'm excited to get back out there. Thanks a lot. Good luck this week. What a good sport there, Sydney LaRue coming on and talking to Dallin after the game. You know, she's got to be frustrated, not getting to pick up the result, but North Carolina coming through with a couple of goals in the second half. Oh, yeah, my, the goals might have started in the 60th minute, but I think there were opportunities in the first, and look at that rifle ball back in the mixer by Ersig. Her timing on that jump, so good, and the McCall with just the sweet touch. But North Carolina all day long was just hounding and hunting, and this was off of a forced turnover in there, attacking third. Brilliant ball by Williams slipped in. I mean, the weight on that, the texture, the bend on it, and then Hatch, the timing, the first touch, everything about that is what you want out of a number nine. So a well-deserved interview for Ashley Hatch after the game as she helped her team to the 2-0 win. Big game for her and her first career start. Got her first career goal. We still have more going on from Cary, North Carolina, so stick around. You're watching the NWSL on Lifetime.